Lord be with you. Listen to the gospel of our Lord according to John chapter 20 verses to begin at 90. Glory to you Lord Jesus Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, as we meditate upon your word, move our hearts and set us free by your spirit. Amen. நம்முடைய ஆண்டவராக இயேசு கிறிஸ்துவின் திருப்பெயர்லே உங்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வாழ்த்துக்களை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கிறேன் தூய ஆவியானவர் தான் உங்களை ஆசீர்வதித்து வழிநடத்துவாராக ஆமேன் in their own languages when the disciples spoke in their own languages. So I thought you could understand me when I spoke in Tamil. <laughs> and according to Paul, there should be at least one who should be in the assembly in the church to interpret if someone speaks in tongues. If I have spoken a tongue different from yours, then we have Minnie is here, she can interpret for you. <laughs> or we are living in an age, Dr. Google is there to translate everything for us. <laughs> Probably this is the age of the spirit. <laughs> okay. So greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May the spirit help us as we meditate upon the word of Lord. <coughs> the gospel that is read to us today, the passage was not about the day of Pentecost, but it was the day on which Jesus was resurrected and the first time he met with his disciples. But these verses, six, four, five verses, convey to us the emphasis of spirit, the importance of spirit, the spirit of God in our lives. Verse 19 we read, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. In this passage we find twice Jesus says to his disciples, Peace be with you. And the disciples were in fear. So peace amidst fear. The Spirit of God, Jesus assured the Spirit of God or he sent his Spirit of God to them to ensure peace in their lives when they were living in fear. The world which we live in, people live in fear for many reasons. The world is seeking for peace. Nations are seeking for peace. Communities are seeking for peace. If an individuals, we as individuals, we seek peace internally as well. This week we observe as the National Week of Reconciliation, finding peace between communities. Peace is essential in our lives and Jesus has assured peace 
by the spirit of god in our lives and this is truly witnessed this was truly witnessed as we read through acts the book of acts how the same disciples who were caught up in fear came out boldly and spoke fearlessly to a multitude of people a number of people a multitude of people gathered before them but without any fear they were able to preach the same gospel for which they were fearful they were fearful because jesus was crucified and they were afraid to tell to the world that they were associated with jesus but now they were empowered with the spirit and their fear has been removed and they were able to tell yes jesus is the lord god has promised us assured us peace in our lives when we live in fear and the second truth that we can get from this passage is the spirit of god enables us unto life we read from verse 22 when he had said this he breathed on them and said to them receive the holy spirit he breathed the word breathe the root word from the greek uh, new testament from the, from the greek the root word is emphusao or the verb form is enphusesen which is which can be found only in this place into the in the entire new testament that makes this verse something unique and special and in the greek version of the old testament which is known as the septuagint the same verb and word can be found in the beginning of the old testament when god breathed into his nostrils and he became a living being so trying to connect these two verses we understand that this breathing when jesus breathed and when god breathed into his nostrils it ensured life the disciples though they were living they were spiritually dead and they were socially dead as well because they did not have any communication outside of the room that they were staying in they literally had no relationship with others because of the fear they were caught up in and they were socially dead this reminds me of uh, something which i heard recently um in the place where i was living for some years i was told we do not care it is not our problem if the church dies or if the church cannot survive in this world in this society it is the church's problem which which actually meant uh, that the church is dying or the church cannot survive in the future or the church can become socially or spiritually dead as well which really broke my heart when i heard because i come from a different context and i go to a different context where i see um from where missionaries came from and uh, to hear such words but the church cannot die because it is ch- it is the god's child and here we see god breathed into them and god breathed into his into the man into the thing that god made and he became a living being the church of god needs continually the spirit of god to be breathed by god so that we receive the spirit of god that the church is alive socially and spiritually socially dead means socially disconnected the society and the world which we live in i do not complain about secularism but we tend to be separated from the society in many ways but i firmly believe that the church always need to be socially active need to engage in the society and in every function of the society actively even it may be to contribute to the laws and change of laws or even it may be contribute to the very life patterns that is ever changing so the church cannot be dead and the spirit of god enables us unto life so we need the spirit of god and we should ask 
in prayer God to breathe into us his spirit his life so that we are enabled as living a living being and finally the spirit of God sets us free verse 23 has plenty of interpretations which also had controversial interpretations in the past if you forgive the sins of any they are forgiven them if you retain the sins of any they are retained here this verse does not give any authority whom we can choose to be forgiven whom we can choose not to be forgiven instead if we read the whole of john's gospel john's gospel is the main purpose of john's gospel is believing in even the gospel writer says in order that you may believe i have written these there are many things which i have not written recorded in this book so it is about belief and unbelief and believing is accepting the johannine community the community of john's gospel was excluded from the society they were excluded from the majority of the the society in which they lived in they were a minority group who wanted to be acknowledged for their faith and for their existence and here it calls for accepting those who come into the belief in Christ, believing in Christ acceptance and then freedom forgiveness of sins can also be interpreted as freedom from sins sin is a bondage a slavery we live in a world we have modern slavery methods and principles which enslave us and forgiveness can be translated as freedom from those sins forgiveness of sins is freedom from bondages romans 8 we read the spirit shall set us free and in 1 corinthians which we read this morning where we listened which says unless by the spirit of god one cannot confess that christ is lord so the belief is that we are set free from the bondages of this world whatever that we are enslaved in and we need to be filled by this spirit of god so that we are set free that we confess christ is lord so setting us free from the bondages means we accept the lordship of christ into our lives so jesus rules our lives our hearts and our minds and our life principles even the church is called to set free those who are in bondages the bondages can can be any it can be spiritual bondages it can be social bondages it can be economic and political bondages the church is called to set free by being filled with the spirit of god the society and the world which we live in which we engage in there are various structures of enslavement slavery we are enslaved in a by i come from a society which is known as a pluralist society as a very secular society by its very uh, basic foundation foundation but still the very existence of caste system is the longest enslaving proper structure in the world likewise we have many enslaving structures in our societies it can be patriarchal structures it can be the adult versus children structures it can be racist structures it can be political politically dominant structures and ideologically dominant structures as well the majority versus minority like can also we we can identify enslaving structures in society and the church is exactly be called been called by god to set those who are experiencing the enslaved methods or slavery in their lives to be set free individuals communities and societies the spirit of god offers us 
peace amidst our fear. The Spirit of God enables us unto life and the Spirit of God sets us free. May we ask God to breathe into us this Spirit of God so that we shall be set free. So that we shall be led unto life so that we shall receive peace in our own lives. Amen. Shall we keep a moment of silence and ponder upon the words that we just heard?